What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And I think I am done saying this is going to be a quick video. <laughs> some videos are going to be long, some videos are going to be short. I like to go in depth and show all the features of a product. So sometimes my videos get lengthy. If people don't like it, they, they, they don't have to watch the video. So Minova released a micro SD card a while back. I posted a few different videos where, you know, I talked about it before it came out because I was excited about it. And then it came out and it's been freaking awesome and I've used it a lot. It's low profile, a lot smaller profile than like the old ones. So you just plug it into the phone and it lights up and it works. You had to have a separate little USB thing, which kind of made it inconvenient because you had to carry that around also with this thing if you plan on using it with a computer. So let's go ahead and, you know, look at the new one and compare it to the old one. Show transferring files back and forth, show that it works in multiple different devices, and we'll go from there. So I made this video probably over a year ago whenever I did it, and Minova reached out to me after they released this new version. So thank you very much for sending this out to me. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have in here. Looks like they sent me a few different colors, so this is pretty cool. I uh, I will say on Twitter what I plan on doing with the extra ones. <laughs> so please follow me on Twitter. This is freaking cool. Thank you, Minova. Thank you. This is awesome. Like, look at this. This is what they sent me. They sent me like the, this is the USB thing that I was talking about. It looks like they actually made it smaller. Then this goes into your computer and then your little card reader would just plug into the bottom of it. So these are the little like cases. You can get blue, red, black. You can get green, orange, white. And then you have a black reader and a white reader. I'm gonna go ahead and get some scissors real quick. I'm gonna take a quick little Instagram picture before I cut all these boxes open or packages. All right, go ahead and send that to my Instagram, which also posts a link to my Twitter. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut open all these things right here. Well, actually, it looks like you don't have to. It just comes out. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, here's the uh, close-up of the back. If you want to pause that and read it all for yourself, it supports cards up to 128 gigs and higher for the future, which is kind of cool because we happen to have a 128 gig card right here, which we're going to test out. And let's, there you go. And then this is the black one. So let's go ahead and pull those out. I really liked that they made the packaging so easy. I truly thought I was going to have to use scissors. So with these ones, you do have to cut it unless it's... No, actually, not even with these. So, dude, this is awesome. I've This is so freaking cool. Minova is... Wow. I am... I bought their SD card in the past because, you know, it was a Kickstarter and it was so, it looked so freaking convenient and it has been. All my ROMs, like I have, I used to have a white Nexus 5 and a black one. So if I was flashing CyanjaMod to it, I could download one ROM, put it on one SD card, put this in both the phones. I have, I had three Nexus, well actually four. I had three Nexus 7 2013s and one 2012 and I could put one ROM on all of those tablets. And by the way, I had one for my wife, one for my daughter, and one for me. That's why there was three of the new ones. So, uh, <laughs> just in case you're like, why do you need three tablets? So, there's all those. This is cray-cray. This is absolutely crazy. So, when you buy the white and the black one, it does come with, you know, built, like, these two colors right here. So, if you get the white one, you're going to get the white sleeve and the little card reader, which, by the way, fits in there like this. So with the old one, you had the little cap and you would take the cap and you would just put it on there whenever you're done with it. And yeah, also one thing I said in my video was this was a little bit fragile. It's not bending a whole lot, but they said they've also improved on the connector. So we're going to go ahead and take the little white thing out of here. Look at that. That is so freaking cool. Let's go ahead and compare that to the old one. Well, I'll, I'll get the black one out before I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this one put this one back in here like such so there we go got it right back in there this is so freaking cool because you can have this little thing on your keychain right here and when you need this part you just take it out so there's the new card reader let's go ahead and show it up close to the old one so 
it's different design as you can clearly see right here. Let's get the both the SD cards facing the right way. So, I mean, it's it's a little bit taller sort of than the old one. But uh yeah, so it's it's different. That's for sure. And then you just take this and you plug it into the little USB thing. And then you plug that into your computer and you transfer the files. So if you're going to be like at a friend's house or something, I do recommend also carrying this with you. And then this plugs into your phone. So let's go ahead and take our 128 gig SD card out of here from SanDisk. And I'll give you a little close up of that. That is 128 gigs, a whole lot of storage in the you know tiny little thing so let's plug that into our little thing here there we go and you can also compare how it sits next to the old one it does hang out just a little bit compared to the old one but that also makes it a little bit easier to pull it out which that one i didn't really have trouble with but this one yeah that's definitely easier to pull out of there with a device such as the nexus 5 you are going to need either nexus media importer if you are not rooted or you're going to need a stick mount if you are rooted. It's an app right here. And it's definitely something you should use if you're going to be using this little guy. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. And I hope they still have lights on it. Because I really like that they had lights on the old one. I'm going to go ahead and hit use by default. Okay. And it doesn't look like there's any activity lights on it. Which is kind of a bummer honestly. I really liked the light that was on here. We'll go ahead and take that and plug it into my uh, Note 3 here. And that was also something I really liked is no matter which way you have this device, the LED is right here. So you can view it whether it's the front or the back. And it flash letting you know when there was activity. All right. It says that the storage has been mounted with most devices such as the Moto G. You will not need or in Samsung devices, you will not need to have root. But with root. You can then go to your internal storage, and then you can go to USB storage and SDA. So for some reason on my Nexus 5, it is not detecting the 128 gigs. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot this real quick. Okay, so there's our initial problem there. The 32 gig is fitting in there all the way, so it's not hanging out the least bit, and the 128 gig was. So if we plug this one in with a 32 gig card, it should mount it just fine with stick mount. It'll say searching. And then it'll say, you know, SDA1, SDA, or for, I've named the SD card 32 gig, so it's called that. So if I go here to USB storage, 32 gig, there's all my stuff that's on the 32 gig card, and I can transfer files back and forth. Another thing is that they increase the speed. So this device can go up to twice as fast if you're using a U3 card, which SanDisk does make one of those, and I am trying to go ahead and get one. So let's take a CM11 ROM here and let's go ahead and hit copy and then we'll go to our internal storage here and we'll hit paste and we'll see just how fast it goes. 25 megabytes per second, 27 and it's holding steady at 28 even faster. So as you saw, that's a very, very fast process. Let's go ahead and unmount that and let's see if we can get the 128 gig to fit in there just a little bit better. active mounts none we can go ahead and pull that out and let's see what the issue was wow that's in there pretty good all right so we got the old card out <laughs> let's put the new card in and see if we can shove it in there a little there we go a little bit of force and it goes in there all the way it is a very snug tight fit so just uh you know know that let's go ahead and plug this in and maybe now it'll work just fine since we have it in there all the way Nice, SDA1, so USB storage, SDA1, and there's all the stuff on here. Now this folder is like four gigabytes, so let's go ahead and copy that over to our internal storage here and hit paste, and we'll see just, you know, how fast it is. This is a faster card, so it reads at pretty decent speeds. We're getting 33, 33 megabytes per second, and as you can see, it's staying at that speed. It's not slowing down. And these files are freaking huge. Like some of them are a couple gigs each. And you see how fast they're moving over. We've got a, about a minute left. Now I'm not going to make you wait that long. So let's go ahead and fast forward. All 
All right, so it looks like it's done transferring. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate just how fast this thing can write to an SD card. Here we have Sandisk's fastest Extreme Pro SD card that writes. You can write to the card at about 70 megabytes per second using a computer and a USB 3.0 card reader. So we're gonna go ahead and unmount this SD card out of here, and we're gonna put this very fast one in and see just how fast we can write the files to it. So I'll go ahead and do this now. It's getting easier to pull it out. The first time was pretty difficult. So let's put this one in and that one in there very easily. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Wait for it to mount the storage. And we're going to take that Elgato folder that we moved to the internal storage. And we're going to copy it over to the external. There's the 16 gig. So let's go ahead and find that folder that said Elgato. And then we're going to go ahead and hit copy. And then we need to go to our uh, USB storage here. And we're going to go to 16 gig. And then we're going to go ahead and paste that. And we're going to see just how fast it writes. Uh, that's very, very nice. The read speeds to my internal storage. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and try that after it's done writing. So we're getting about 30 on the right to the SD card, which is very nice. Now, this is an Extreme Pro. If you got the Extreme or the Extreme Plus, you would also be looking at 26 33 megabyte per second right now I will tell you that with the like ultras you're going to get 11 to 14 on average writing to the sd card so if you're wanting faster write speeds and even faster read speeds then you need to consider getting the extreme or the extreme plus with sandisk so uh, and also sandisk just released the u3 like i'm I said earlier in the video, so we're going to see later on in the future how fast those are. Now, this is the U1, but it's Extreme Pro, so it's still very fast. We're going to go ahead and cancel this transfer here. I'm going to eject this card. All right, and I'm also going to go ahead and plug it into our Nexus 7 here. Now, this has CyanogenMod, so you actually don't have to use stick mount if you have CyanogenMod. It will mount it by default. And then when you open ES File Explorer or, or any app that's a file manager, you'll actually see the option for USB disk right there. And then we can see that Elgato folder. We did cancel the write to it, so it's not going to all, not everything's going to be in there, just three videos. So we'll go ahead and go to the Elgato and we'll copy that and we'll put it on our internal storage here. And we'll see just how fast this process is. So we're getting 25 megabytes per second. So it was actually faster on this one. So that just leaves me to believe that the internal storage on the Nexus 5 might be faster than the internal storage on the Nexus 7 2013. Videos like these are for my tech heads, for people that like to know this kind of information. So that's why my videos sometimes get a little bit longer than other people out there would it would like. So let's delete this Elgato folder real quick from our internal storage on here. And then we'll go ahead and copy it from the USB storage. And remember, we're still using a very fast SD card. So Elgato. And then copy. And then go to our internal storage here. And paste. And let's see if we get... Uh, well, we're looking at 33, 30, almost 34. So, you know, we're looking at good speeds. It doesn't take long at all. This is way faster than like class 10, which is... You know, <laughs> not that fast. So they claim that this thing can go up to twice as fast using a U3 card versus the old card reader that's right here. Again, we're using U1, so that might have an impact on it. We might see speeds faster than that. So that's about it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. It's unmounted, so we're going to, before we end this video, we're going to go ahead and stick it in the bottom of our... Note three here, we are running a custom ROM called CyanogenMod. So and I'm on the, actually the latest nightly because they just changed it. And now instead of flashing the generic HLTE build, you, use, you actually go back to the way it used to be with the uh, SPR version. So we'll see if we have ES File Explorer on here. And at the top, we're going to go ahead and see, look, USB disk. So we have our 32 gig internal or uh, external storage right here. And we have our USB disk. We're going to go to Elgato. We're going to do a copy, send it to our internal storage, and then choose paste. And see how long it takes on here as well. So all of, actually the Nexus 5 has the fastest built-in read speed out of any devices 
on this table right now. So that's actually really, really cool to know. And the Nexus 5 is actually half the price that this phone was brand spanking new. The gist of it is, you can clearly see the fact that having one of these right here, I'm able to load the files from a computer onto this little card reader and transfer my files to it. And then I can bring this over to a friend's house, which this one's transferring, so I'm using the old one here. But you can bring this over to a friend's house and you can you know, load a ROM or music or whatever from their phone. And you don't have to copy everything over. I can simply load MP3s, uh, 1080p MKVs. I can load whatever I want on this 128 gig card and carry this around in my pocket or on my keychain since it has a little key ring on right there. And I can put this in any friend's phone. Or if I, if I need any files for something, I can plug it in the bottom of my phone and then I can you know upload them using my phone's mobile connection. There is a ton of uses for these little guys right here and I hope you see where I'm going with this. Now, I guess the debate is, should you get the old one or should you get the new one? And I've got to say, I really, 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 really enjoy the light from the old one. It actually made it very easy to tell, you know, if there was data activity going on, if your device doesn't support OTG like the Nexus 4 doesn't, then that light wouldn't light up and you wouldn't you wouldn't be guessing, you know, is it the SD card? Is it the card reader? Is it my phone? You would know because the light on here is working, so obviously it's working and I'm seeing the USB disk 120. Look at that. 119 gigabytes right there. That's that is just awesome and so freaking cool. I can go to the Elgato folder and I can watch this clip with a video player and it's streaming right from the SD card, but I'm seeing it on my mobile device here. That is just absolutely priceless. Another example is if you have a little bitty like 8 gig Moto G or if you have a 4 gig Moto E, as long as it supports OTG, which I know the Moto G does, you can load all of your really big movies and pictures and stuff on here and then view them on your mobile device. And when you're done watching that movie, pull the SD, pull it out. It's, it's, it's that freaking simple. It's freaking awesome. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor by giving the video a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel out more than you know. And if you have your social media accounts connected to your YouTube accounts, I'll get a tweet saying that you liked my video and I'll favorite your tweet and maybe even reply to you. In the description, I will have links to this SD card right here. You can purchase it directly from Inova and they're like freaking 12 bucks and like $3 for shipping in the US. And if you want, you can choose to get the old one if they're still available. I'm not quite sure. The new one definitely has convenience over the old one, like being able to carry this on your keychain and have, you know, 128 gigs of storage wherever you go and be able to plug this into your Nexus 7 over here, your, your Note 3, and then your Nexus 5, and then your Moto G, and your NVIDIA Shield. And it's, there's just, there's so many possibilities. There's so many uses. I can't recommend this thing enough. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by leaving a rating. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.